I've always been someone who struggles to like, like even Demi, like we met when we was 12, I don't think yeah. I spoke to her till I was 15. Wow. Because <laughs> I'm just, I was just that? a deadly shy child. When you're mentally not, you know, with it, you think, well, what is it? What's triggering that? You know, why am I feeling like this? So it, it, it's a lot easier to sort of physically to be hurt than it is when you're yeah. mentally not right. You just don't know what's going through someone's head, what's going through in their life, what's happening. Because some people don't like sharing. Mental Health Awareness Week is an annual event which gives us the opportunity to focus on achieving good mental health. It's a topic that is incredibly close to my heart and I'm pleased to say I'm going to be sitting down with two of England's lionesses, Demi Stokes and Lucy Bronze, for a bit of a chat. Lucy, Demi, how are you both? You good? Yeah, good, thank you. Very good, thanks. Now we're here for Mental Health Awareness Week, a very important topic as well, very close to my heart as well. So I suppose the first thing I wanted to ask you is how important do you think these conversations are? Yeah, hugely important. I think as I've got older, I've realised how it's become more of an important subject and aspect of my own life. Really? Um, no. Yeah, I think like 10 years ago, for one, it wasn't something that was spoken yeah. about, not only in like, say, a team setting or even like at home or even on the TV and things like that. I think, yeah, 10 years ago, I think I was definitely one of them people that would push it the same yeah. way. I think English mentality is to not not be weak and, mm. you know, don't cry. And if you do, you know, it doesn't look good. And I think obviously for me growing up as well, it was the same thing. If something happened, it was almost like you parked it and you, tomorrow's on. a new really? day and you carry yeah. on almost. So. Yeah, I think you look out for it more as well. So if you see someone's um, behaviour change, you might think, oh, actually, what you know, what's going on? And you can just say, like, you know, you're all right. Whereas, I think 10 years ago, you probably you probably wouldn't even look out for it. You would just, I think you like wouldn't question years ago, it, it like, would you? Say, like, an hour set, and it would be like, what is she crying for? Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, why is she being so soft? It's not yeah. that deep. Like, it's not a big deal. But, like... Yeah, I think we've, we've all learned now, like, you just don't know what's going right. through someone's head, what's going through in their life, what's happening. Because some people don't like sharing, like, yeah, true. certain aspects of their life or how they're feeling. And sometimes you have to, I know, like, me and Demi probably are them two people that you maybe have to probe a little bit more to actually get to the root of, are you all right? We'll just be like, yeah, I'm fine. I think, as well, the younger players are a little bit more open than mm. maybe we were when we were younger. They've had a lot more education. Um, they've seen a lot more of like the people that they look up to or their role models coming out and speaking about it. Like I know Kaz Carney, someone that we played with, mm. and she openly spoke a lot about it, yeah. more particularly at the end of her career. But it's something that she dealt with a lot throughout her career, yeah. and only at the end she was really speaking about it. And yeah, like I, I wouldn't have known playing really with her for the all them years. Yeah. I would I had a clue, wow. and I, like I got on really well with Kaz and stuff. But yeah, I think people like that opening up, you've then got these younger players that are like a lot more open than we were when we were younger because we were like back in the generation where it was like, don't let, don't show like weakness. Yeah. Like it was seen even, as a weakness. Even it's probably a strength actually. It's 100%, yeah. I, yeah. I, I 100% seen yeah. whether it's your day to day life or in a sport or you know, football or something. Mm. I've definitely seen it as a, as a strength rather than weakness, like owning who you are and how you feel. Definitely, and I think when you're younger, you think, you know, when we watch Calvin Carney, we'd be like, oh my God, she's like invincible. Yeah. You know, she's got, you know, her life's like roses and daffodils and yeah. not, you know, nothing bad yeah. happens. So I think obviously growing up and you see people like us that actually go, I am struggling. Yeah. I think for the younger players, it's actually, well, yeah, I am human and I'm a footballer, but I also am human and I do have feelings. So, you know, I, I wouldn't want the young age groups to go through what we went through and how we felt. So I think it's important to, you know, start them conversations and ask if people are right. And it is uncomfortable. It's not nice at um, both sides. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I think we can change, you know, the perception of how mental health is perceived and, um, that everyone has something going on. Yeah, it's so true that, because it's almost like when you say to someone, the first, the first thing you say to anyone when you see them, how you doing, you're right, yeah, yeah, yeah fine. Yeah, fine. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, it's like, if they say anything things, other than, yes, I'm fine, which yeah. so many people aren't fine now with everything that's going on, but you always you don't know what, how to react to that, do you? But it, it, yeah. it, it, it should be something that's done more often uh, and, and ask people really actually how, how are you yeah, and can I, I help you? I think like that has almost just become a greeting rather yeah. than it actually. I mean we did it when you watched someone, hey then, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like, I guess it's a different way of asking yeah. now. Yeah, I found that when That's I lived in America, if I'd say, are you okay? And they'd go, yeah, why, what's wrong? And they go, 
you know, I'm just asking like, yeah. you know, how, how are you then? I might have to say, how are you then, yeah. rather than, are you okay? Well, it's like that Englishman that you said, like, it's part of our culture, just be like, you're right, you're yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this year's theme is loneliness. Now, obviously you two have had unbelievable careers with the amount of trophies and success, but have there been moments where you have experienced loneliness, where, where there have been really tough times in your career? Yeah. yeah, well, I think the thing as well with both of yeah. us, we both have left home and lived mm. in a different country um, at like a younger age as well. When I was 17, I went to America. Yeah. When, you're, when you're that age, you just think, I'm invincible, I can do this. Like, I don't need a mum. Like, I'm sound. And I got there, I was like, Mum, <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> in what sense, it, because it was just a culture change? Yeah, it was doing just. Doing everything for yourself? I think it was just like, whenever you do go to do anything, you have an expectation of what it's going to be yeah, like. like yeah. And when it's different, you're like, ooh. But especially when you're younger, you don't really plan for that. Yeah. And then it's like, is it, you're, is on, this your own, for me, like you're yeah. on your own. Now. Yeah, yeah that's tough that. You, you turn you up and you're not knowing many people, and yeah, you're not knowing anyone. Your family's and, not with you. To be honest, I think I'm glad I did it in a country where they spoke English because then when I went to France, I'm so glad I went like that was the other, that way around because I went to France and didn't know the language and I didn't know anybody and I literally walked in and I was so excited but at the same time I was like oh my god like I'm living on my own again like I was still yeah I was in my mid 20s so I knew how to sort everything out yeah. but that you, initial, you almost like, have to like grow up quick yeah. Yeah, you just have to be coming out so quick and think, oh, right, I'll sort it out and I'll get on. And it's probably quite similar to how you don't address mental health or have a conversation. It's the same thing what we probably did is when we were away, we just went, all right, tunnel vision. Yeah. I'm here to play football. Mm. I'm here to get a job done. And oh, I think we're doing it that way as well as like, if you, like, I know for me, if I focus on something and it's fine, but then as soon as it kind of hits a bump, you're like, it kind of falls on top of you a yeah. little bit because you've not allowed yourself to look at those things in the first place. So like I went say, to live abroad and I was on my own, but I was like, oh, it's fine, playing football, I'm winning. Yeah. And like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But then something happens, say like you get injured and you're like, I'm on my own. Mm. I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, so interesting because people look at your mood of winning the Champions League, playing at the hype, living in France, nice weather, but you, you don't <laughs> see all that other stuff. And obviously there must have been amazing times, but living on your own, you know, there must have been times when you were really lonely and actually people don't see that side of, that side of it, do they? Yeah, definitely. I think, like, for me as well, I've always been someone who struggles to, like, like, even Demi, like, we met when we were 12. I don't think yeah. I spoke to her till I was 15. Wow. Because <laughs> I was just, <laughs> oh, I was just a deadly shy child <laughs> yeah. and I've had something I had to work on because I know for myself, like, if you don't, if I don't work on it and don't push myself, like, yeah. I'll end up in that lonely place, yeah. which is a, not a place that I want to be. Yeah. So obviously that was, like another level than doing that in a country where people speak different languages yeah. and it was like I need to put myself out there a little bit more. Being prepared, like make make your friends and, and have plans and be open to doing things a little bit more because you are on your own. Whereas when I'm in England, I'm probably not as much like that because I'm more comfortable yeah. and I have a lot of some good support system around me. But yeah, abroad, I'm like, yeah, push it a You've little got bit. Got to push it, haven't you? Yeah. Like yeah. I, feel, I felt like I had to do that, especially because the American personality again was very different to what mm. I was used to. Um, I remember Coach said that someone had a house party and I didn't go to it, wow. and I actually got in trouble for not going. For not going. Wow. And she was like, "You need, you know, you need to interact with the girls more, and you need to go." And I was like, "I'm not here to get drunk." And yeah. then she was like, "Yeah, but you've, that side, whether you like it or not, you need to push it." And I would be like, "Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not here. Yeah. I'm not here yeah. to do that." It was. Yeah. I was here to get a degree, I wanted to improve and then I wanted to almost like go back home. Um, another part of this with, with regards to learning is obviously injuries, you've both suffered quite serious injuries. Talk us through those moments, Lucy, you've recently just had quite a, quite a long term knee injury. How tough were those times for you mentally? Honestly, I think the mental side's way tougher than really? the physical side. I think the plan to get better or to, to get fit is yeah. is set out to so like for your knee, it's like, okay, you need to get yeah. strong, you need to do this. Agree. And, and you, you learn head how to yeah. physically do what you need yeah, to do. Yeah, the to process is step out of step, but then for your head, I think because everyone's so different and it's not like, I can't take my brain out and roll yeah. it out and be like, we need to fix this, this and this. Yeah. Like, it's like everybody's brain works completely differently yeah. in different situations. So there's not like an ABC kind of, you can't just treat everybody the same, I think, well, me and Demi had the same injury, mentally we'd both yeah. be exactly the same. Like, you won't be. And especially if you don't know the real, like I think once you know physically why 
there's something going on. You can almost then focus and be like, right, I do this, this and this. That's what like, something like Lucy, you almost tick it off. Mm. Whereas I think when you're mentally not, you know, with it, you think, well, what is it? What's triggering that? You know, why am I feeling like this? So it, it, it's a lot easier to sort of like, physically to be hurt than it is when you're yeah. mentally not right. I think when I'm older, it's been easier, but I think my worst one was, I had a knee injury and I was out for a whole year yeah. and I was at university and I was really lonely at the time because I was uh, like my first year of uni so you trying to like make friends but I was trying to play football and I was injured, I was on crutches, I couldn't drive like that was like really really difficult but at the same time that's what I've learned everything from that experience in every other injury like making sure that like I keep in touch with people a bit more like making sure I'm a bit open about Actually, I am having a bad day. Like, yeah. I'm someone who hates admitting, like, weakness yeah. and, like, hates admitting that I'm wrong or that I don't feel good. And I, and I worked out from that, actually, like, that's a strength to say you're not yeah. good. Because, actually, training when you're not good, it's like, for your body, yeah. is it's worse really for you. Worse than and it's the same, yeah, it's the good. same for your brain, like, trying to force yourself when you're not good. It's the worst thing you do. Sometimes you need to step back and be yeah. like, right, reset, like, calm yourself down. And we'll start again. Definitely yeah. looking at your body language there. You're not yeah, yeah, no, I was, I was so just. With injuries for you, was that very relatable? What, what Lucy was saying. Yeah, I think I think when I did my hip, I was out for nine months, but it was just you like that. You just struggle, or you get frustrated, and I, like Lucy said, you like I, I don't want to go up to someone and say actually I'm struggling yeah. today, or I need you help. know, I, yeah, I, like it's not very often I would ever say like look I need help or you know, I need an ear, can you just listen to us? I think I'm probably the one that does it for people, like, are you okay? And yeah. I'm, I'm happy to listen to other people. I think equally. it's that perception with it as well, though, because say, like, we're, like, we play for England, like, people probably yeah. think, this doesn't need no help, like, yeah, you she'll be dream. fine, yeah, yeah, like, she's fine. Like, that almost makes it harder than, like, if someone labels you as something, and think, oh, that's a strong person, they, they don't show weakness, then you're like, I'm gonna, I can't show weakness because I'm meant to be strong, yeah. but like, that's, yeah. that is strong to open up and to yeah. be vulnerable, to ask for help. But it is harder when people see you as something else. Yeah. I think it's harder when it's someone you're close to as well. Like I know if like I went up to Lucy and said, look, I'm struggling, Lucy probably would be surprised and vice, vice versa. But I think, you know, if it's someone you don't know quite well, it probably is all easy to open up because actually you think, well, probably might not see them again and they're probably not going <laughs> to yeah. judge me, do you know what I yeah. mean? So I do think it is harder to open up to people that are close, but I think when you do, it, you are brave. Like, yeah. you know, I think I sent someone on Facebook the other day and it was, um, I said to Lucy, it's a walk and talk group for men. Yeah. Um, and it's up in South Shields and I just, like, I was like, that's so good. And there was a lot of them shared the stories yeah. and I was like, I'm just going to comment. And I was like, do you know what, you are literally so brave because like, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, finally then, obviously you've both spoken so bravely about issues you've had with regards to loneliness and your mental health. There's so many people suffering with, with so many different aspects of mental health right now. So I suppose, just finally, I want to say is what advice would you have? I think, like, ask for help. Something that I do is, like, kind of like a subtle, subtle hints to people. Mm. Even if you can't physically say, I need help. Like, show it, you, your body language shows it. Like, you can show it in other ways where hopefully, like, people might pick up that side. Like for me, it works quite well speaking to someone like Demi said, like that I don't know. It, it's easier to open up. Sometimes you feel like if you do your family, like, oh, they're going to be worried about me. They're yeah. gonna, it's going to drag them down. So yeah, but equally, your family's also there to help and support. Like I'd go to my mum with anything. Yeah, I think obviously you, you use your family, figure out obviously who you, your good people are and I think keep them close. But I think as well, you, if you need a psychologist, if it gets to that point, like use them as well, but use them when it's good times as well. And you'll you'll eventually see that actually when you're not feeling so good, it everything almost smooths out. You need to look for people, ask for help. Like don't, don't wait until it's too late. Like don't be reactive, try and be proactive, especially if you know that you're, you're kind of vulnerable to being feeling lonely or feeling bad about yourself. Again, that's a taboo where we just go to psychologists when we're feeling bad, bad yeah. when actually we can use them when they're good and then that way it stops you from, you know, erupting. Yeah, you know getting I mean? too high, yeah. too low. So I think when you, even when you are good, it's still good to vent and, you know, mm. it's still good to express that actually I'm feeling good and this is why I'm feeling good. Demi, Lucy, brilliant advice. Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. Thank you. See you soon. Cheers. See ya. Thank you.